Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm going to turn off comments and I'm going to show you which image you all chose. Okay, so. So, the image that you chose, you had a choice of three, actually. Let's just bring up. So, this, this was your choice. Um, so you had a choice of a man having boiling, either boiling water or perhaps some kind of molten metal or boiling oil or something um, poured all over him. Um, you had a choice of a woman lying, getting pronged on a, a rack, as it turns out. Um, or you had the choice of a man getting sliced to bits, his arm actually is in two pieces, if you if you care to notice that level of detail, if you want to notice that level of detail. Um, so these are the three choices that you had. They're all frescoes from the church of Santo Stefano Rotondo in Rome. Um, all created by mostly a guy called Nicolo Sergnani. Um, also, uh, Matteo da Siena is uh, is thought to have contributed, but Sergnani is the uh, is the, the the main artist here. Um, all from about fifteen eighty two, fifteen eighty three. So all Counter Reformation frescoes. We'll come on to that later. So the one that you chose, brrr, drum roll, drum roll, please, is this one. Yeah, you just can't resist a bit of prong action, can you? Um, this, it might surprise you, actually. The, um, the identity of this saint might surprise you, especially if you follow art history um, a little bit or just even the, the stories of the, the, the saints, um, because this is, in fact, Saint Margaret. Yeah, not a usual depiction at all of Saint Margaret. Um, so here she is, stretched out on this table which actually turns out to be a rack if you can notice the guy you can just see his head and his arm in the bottom bottom left corner um he's actually it's, it's a really horrible reproduction i'm sorry it's quite hard to get good um reproductions of frescoes um because obviously they're quite hard to photograph and so on but actually if you can just notice he's actually turning a wheel um and if you notice kind of just below St. Margaret's armpit um, or, or her upper arm, the table is in fact separating so she is on a rack. So with each turn, um, presumably her body is becoming more and more stretched. So that's, uh, so that's one form of torture. Um, she is a sort of semi-naked, so you could think, okay, well, is she... Do you remember last week we were saying that uh, St. Marius had a slightly erotic look about him? Let's just say, have I still got St. Marius up here? Um, I'm fairly sure I do, St. Marius. Um, do I? Um, oh, there we go. We've got... Oh, no. We've got, um, we've got this bit. So that's St. Marius. That's not St. Marius. That's me. <laughs> look. Um... So the guy with the, uh, the guy who was, um, the guy who was uh, tied up there. So you know, so you you know, you could say okay, well, there's a, some sort of similarity in that she is um, semi-naked, arms back above her head. So again, it's all you know, breasts lifted, stomach taut. Uh, but that's not really the vibe of this one, is it? It's all slightly ruined, even though she doesn't look bothered at all, but it's all slightly ruined by the fact that she is getting pronged in the tit by uh, what looks like a hay fork, a two-pronged hay fork. Um, all she has to do is to stop this torture is to look at the guy just behind her who is holding up an idol. So, St. Margaret or Margaret, you know, this is what the people I reckon above are, are, are shouting down at her. You know, the, but the background in this is quite unusual. There don't seem to be many bodies or anything in the background. There are just people watching this torture um, within this 
a very classical architecture um, and they're just probably yelling look at the idol they'll stop if you look at the bloody idol but no she is having none of it because she is a confirmed Christian and so the torture continues um, she's getting raked with a hay fork as um, a, by actually a very intent looking he kind of he does look like he's really concentrating on his task and he doesn't look at all horrified does he or what he's up to this guy in the blue over on the right hand side who's like raking her uh, raking her chest um, and uh, similarly the the guy who is cranking up the um, cranking open the rack he's also he's also very diligent in his world which I think is um, is sort of part of the horror of these the, the the fact that these torturers are just going about their business as though they might be um, uh, you know turning a wheel for water in a, a well and and indeed raking up hay or, or, or straw you know it's just it's just so it's the the quotidian nature of this um, is quite um, horrifying so yes, so St Margaret, she is having none of this idol. She is thinking about God and so therefore the torture continues. You'll notice um, that she does have this um, sort of, it looks as though she's got a scar all the way down the centre of her stomach. And I don't think that that is... Um, by accident, while well, nothing is by accident, the artist has chosen every single element of these of these frescoes. But I think that possibly this um, this um, wound down her down the centre of her stomach is reference to her more common depiction within um, both art and also um, in in literature when she's talked about in literature or in stories. Um, so this is how she's more commonly depicted um, coming out of a dragon. So this is the St. Margaret that you quite possibly know and love. Um, and I love this. And they're often they're often quite similar. Um, so St. Margaret was as, as one of her tortures, yes, swallowed by a dragon um, and um, and presumably because she was such a holy personage this dragon um, who is probably in this situation actually um, a, a symbolic of the devil so he is he kind of stands in for the the, the, the devil dragons are quite interesting in art and in literature because they have many many different meanings um, so the devil would only be one of them sometimes they um, are symbolic of wisdom dragons and snakes in Greek mythology are absolutely interchangeable and snakes are symbols of eternity so they've kind of they've got lots of they've got lots of different um, references depending on the context but here Definitely the dragon is supposed to be representative of the, of the devil. So this devil has swallowed up the, the holy personage of St. Margaret. Um, but because of her holiness, it all was far too much for the dragon. And so he had to, re oh, it is the devil, it was the, is the dragon, is the devil a he or she? Uh, it had to reject her straight away and expel her. And so she um, was expelled out of the dragon's stomach. Usually, this in this case, it's the back, and you can and you can and you can see how quickly she's been rejected by the dragon because look, he hasn't even finished eating her yet. He's still got a bit of a cloak in his mouth, um, looking for all the world as if he's posing for a picture. I think you know he's like a little bit of a little bit of material in his mouth. Oh, have you got my good side? Do I look good? What do you mean she's already coming out of me? Ah. Oh, um, so and and she's sort of looking down at him as if yeah yeah got you mate you can swallow me but I'm coming right out ha 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 um and you can see how how holy she is because look there are rays of heavenly light coming down towards her um so the story of Saint Margaret um always um 
uh, it's tied up with the, the, the story of, you know, of her coming out of this the dragon's stomach. So she is, by the way, unsurprisingly, the patron saint of childbirth. Um, but she, um, yeah, her story is is considered to be a slightly dodgy one in terms of uh, stories of the saints, mostly because it only began to be told of, ooh, about 400 years after her death. So... Mm. Um, I mean, you know, because obviously all of the the rest of the stories about the saints are completely true, and none of them are completely or none of them are embellished at all. Clearly, um, so the story of Saint Margaret is that um, it's a bit of a Cinderella story, actually. So you know, it's perfect for this time of year. Oh yes, it is. Uh, she was um, a very young girl when she converted to Christianity. She was in a pagan household and her father rejected her. He threw her out. So wicked stepfather, perhaps not a wicked stepmother, a wicked father rather. Um, and so she was out in the world by herself and so she decided to become a shepherdess. Uh, so here is Sir Margaret as a shepherdess. This is in the National Gallery. It's by um, Francisco Zurbaran. Um, early 17th century, 1631, I think. Looking so serious. She's like, she is rocking her look. A very Spanish-looking shepherdess because the Buran was Spanish. And if you notice, in the background is this dragon who is maybe about to swallow her up, but she is fine with that uh, because she's got her Bible in her hand um, and um, a big pokey stick by the looks of things. <laughs> she's got poke her way out. Um, so all good there. So anyway, so it's thrown up by her father. She becomes a shepherdess. Um, unfortunately, as I think is obvious from this image, she was incredibly, incredibly beautiful. And she attracted the attention of a Roman prefect who was inevitably pagan and um, as part of his attentions, he was trying to persuade her to convert to or convert back to uh, to paganism, to to reject her Christianity. Uh, she said no, thank you very much, um, and he got really really cross with her for a start because she wouldn't uh, worship pagan idols and uh, and you know and and reject her Christianity, and secondly and. Perhaps most importantly, she rejected him. She said, no, I don't fancy you at all. In fact, I don't fancy any man. Thank you. Um, I am spurning your advances. Uh, so he got proper cross and decided that she should suffer the consequences of her actions. And so this is where we get uh, poor old St. Margaret, who is really properly tortured. So probably at some point she was um, put on a rack. Um, perhaps at some point she was pronged in the boobs by a hay fork. Don't know, not very nice. Um, she was put into boiling water. We know that that doesn't work. Uh, she was burnt. We know that that didn't work. Um, and so St. Margaret was then, as is the case with so many of these saints, eventually beheaded. This is the good old beheading. I can't believe I actually just said that. Good old beheading. Um, that uh, that eventually did for her. And so off she went then to meet her Prince Charming in heaven. Um, Prince Charming, of course, being God or Jesus. Um, so you might wonder... Okay, so if her most famous torture is to be swallowed by a dragon and then to re-emerge from the dragon fully intact, why is this image or this depiction of her um, not not one of the, the frescoes? You know, why have the artists chosen to represent St. Margaret in this rather more obscure way. I mean, you wouldn't actually really know that this was St. Margaret apart from the handy little, um, which has been painted out. I think this must be a reproduction of the fresco, so uh, sorry about that. Um, the handy little uh, reference system, um, which 
the A, B and C and then there's a big reference system below along with um, references for verses and um, and scriptures and and so on so it's all it's all it's all quite um it's all quite a a, a, a gza- what's the word um uh the the whole the whole work um a gazamped oh god anyway the the gazamkunts oh god ooh let's forget i even started that anyway it's all it's all literature and the scriptures and um well, certainly the scriptures in the bible and art all all in one very that's a very bad way of saying it uh, so we know this is Margaret. Anyway, my point was, why didn't they depict her um, with the dragon? Well, I was thinking about this and I was thinking, yeah, why didn't they? And I think it might be because, um, I have mentioned several times, these are counter-reformation frescoes. And so many of them are equating, in fact, nearly all of them are equating the plight of the Catholics in the 16th century against the nasty Protestants um, to the plight of Christians, um, Catholics, in, um, in pagan times. Okay, so there's there's all often an equation going on here. And so really they're talking about um, like man's, the, the, the fight between men like man's inhumanity um, to um, to the, the, the Catholics or, you know, the pagans or the Protestants' inhumanity towards the, the Catholics in particular in this, in, this, uh, in this context. And so I guess that a dragon doesn't really fit in, does it? So I guess that this dragon, um, who is the embodiment of the devil, um, isn't that sort of something extra something a little bit separate something that hasn't been um generated by man do you see what i mean so some of these frescoes have um lions and other wild animals in them because the the saints were or the martyrs the martyred saints were were tortured you know they were hoping pagans were hoping that they would be torn apart by wild animals but inevitably the wild animals wouldn't touch them because they were too holy um, but they were put there by humans whereas the dragon thing the dragon just kind of like rocks up and and eats her as the as the devil and so kind of human humans didn't have any part in that um and because yeah because these are very much about the uh, the the fight between different uh, sections of society um i think uh, i think that's why she is depicted tortured by some very human looking people um rather than uh, by by the dragon i hope that makes sense that makes sense in my head, but I don't know whether I've actually got it out very well at all. Who knows? Anyway, so this is St. Margaret, part of the Santo Stefano fresco cycle in um, in Rome, just on the, the slight outskirts of Rome, um, created by Niccolò Sashnani in 1582. Okay, let's turn comments on. And stop sharing good morning good morning good morning everybody um so yeah there you go i hope you followed that um i don't know um i think you i think you kind of if you've if you've listened to me over the past few weeks i think you'll i think you will be getting my drift um so i'm off now i've got a tour in the national gallery this afternoon uh, that hasn't been cancelled miraculously um so yeah i'm looking forward to that actually very much even though obviously i'll be doing it wearing a mask um and and then yeah maybe a few low-key christmas things because the big ones aren't happening but there we go um so have a a lovely tragic saint story yes they're all lovely and tragic i mean beautifully tragic yes um 
So, yeah, have a lovely day. Have a lovely rest of the week. Have a lovely weekend. Um, I will be here next week. Um, what is that? Where is that nearly Christmas? Is that the 20? I think I'll be here next week. I'll let you know. I think I'll be here next week. Um, anyway, have a good time. Keep safe and as well as possible, everybody, get jabbed. Um, eat mince pies and drink brandy. That's the beyond the palate way of coping with these crazy times. <laughs> Take care. Thank you for joining. <laughs>